Now very recently we uploaded a video showing on how I got this vehicle that was on an inclined driveway into my garage. Couldn't steer it, couldn't roll it and a lot of you asked what happened because I just quickly showed the damage on this passenger side. So I'm going to pull off the wheel and show you what's going on. But the backstory is very quickly, this vehicle belonged to a friend of mine. About two months ago there was a pretty nasty rainstorm. And he's, he just dropped off his grandkid uh, to, to school and he was driving home and he hydroplaned, unfortunately. 2006 TL, by the way, 74,000 miles. So not a lot of miles by any means. And when he struck the curb, it was on a road roughly 40 miles an hour. He was going around 30 or so. And it was just the point of impact could have been worse. He was able to drive the vehicle. So he hit the curb. He did drive the vehicle to his mechanic roughly five miles, uh, very, very slowly, but he made it. And he left it there a couple hours later, a real honest mechanic, and he ultimately said, you have two choices. You can fix the vehicle with salvage parts for roughly 25, could be $2,800. The flip side is brand new Acura parts, you could be north of $4,000. And at that point, he's a retired individual, he needs something reliable for the family, so on and so forth. He decided to donate the vehicle. Now, oh, at that point, he called me. He told me what happened, and I immediately offered to buy the vehicle. I, remember, I still remember when he purchased this vehicle brand new back in 2005. And uh, again, low mileage vehicle. Nobody knew what was wrong with the car at this point. No, the mechanic didn't explain anything. He just said, this is the price, you know, let me know what you want to do. So I offered to buy the vehicle from him. He would not take a dime from me. Uh, very grateful regarding that. Would not, you know, refuse to take any money whatsoever. So, but what I did is I started doing some videos, maybe you saw some of them, just replacing the drive belt, inspecting the tie belt, because I figured I'll, I'll do this repair in the spring once it starts to warm up. So what I would do here, as you can see, it's winter time. Every so often I would start the vehicle and just, you know, just run the vehicle for a little while, make sure the battery doesn't die, that sort of thing. And I decided, you know, let me just drive it up and down the block a little bit, you know, get the transmission moving, that sort of thing. So I, I, I reversed out of my driveway and uh, I put the car you know, in drive and started driving around maybe 10 feet and I heard a, lo a really large clunking sound and it, it kind of freaked me out. I said, oh, you know, let me get back. So I started to do, I started to execute a K-turn. So I literally just turned the wheel. Once I hit the curb, I hit reverse. And once I started to strain out the wheel, all hell broke loose. The whole passenger side just collapsed and I immediately knew that the axle snapped because I wasn't moving. And of all times for it to happen, we were expecting to get a snowstorm that night around 6 p.m. At this point, it's around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So now I, need, I don't have any wheel dollies, nothing like that, and I had to get a tow truck. Long story short, I did get the tow truck, took around two hours, and I was just really worried of blocking uh, snow plows and things like that. So I was able to get it back at least in the driveway. Now this is really the first time I've taken, uh, I'm going to take a look at it. And based on what I saw very quickly last week, I didn't look at it. To me it was just, let me turn on a light here. It was just a smash. Certainly as you can see, look at the axle, completely smashed which is no big deal in terms of repair. The other thing, last week I was stating this is probably a transmission line and someone, uh, thankfully they noted that it is a power steering line. So thank you for that. So this obviously needs to be replaced. Look at it, just all crimped up. Other things, obviously this is the knuckle here. This is steel. This seems to be okay, but I'll take a better look. Underneath this rotor, and I'm going to do a complete repair on this. Underneath this rotor, you have the wheel hub. Unfortunately, on this car, the wheel hub and the bearing is not one unit. So under this rotor, you have the wheel hub, which are essentially the studs, and there's a uh, circular, essentially, component. Then behind that, built into this, toward the bottom, so essentially right here, you have the wheel bearing that's pressed in. And if, uh, you know, I just, I'd rather have vehicles if, if it, well, I shouldn't say that. It's easier to have a vehicle that has a wheel hub and the wheel bearing built as one because you can just swap it out easily. But because this wheel bearing is pressed into the knuckle, uh, because that's something I do want to replace is the wheel bearing, uh, you know, I'll, I'll decide what I'm going to do about that. So in other words, it just makes the job a little bit harder. 
But let me see. Let me take a look at this main component. So here's your lower control arm. And this is grease from the axle. And you know what? Wait a minute. The control arm didn't snap. The subframe did. The subframe, yep. It's actually, so if you take a look, really stupid on my part because if I remember correctly, correctly, right about here, this is where the it started to crack, the subframe, when I first got the car. As you can see, it's been completely sheared off. This whole subframe, which is now down here, so this is the subframe. Now what the subframe is, this is what the transmission and the engine sits on. So when they, when they build the vehicle, the transmission and the engine is sitting on this aluminum subframe and then it mates up to the vehicle. And this has been, it's just completely destroyed. A new one again, seven, eight hundred bucks used, maybe four hundred bucks or so, maybe less. So that's what we have going on here. So obviously I'll be doing a complete repair on this. Uh, changing a lot of parts, I don't want to take any chances, but ultimately that's what we're looking at. So that's what's going on with this vehicle. Many of you on the last video stated, I've never seen a, uh, a snap subframe on an Acura TL. Well, here it is, but obviously it takes a lot of force for that to happen. So any questions, comments, please leave it below. We, we will start the uh, disassembly on this very, very soon. And until next time, thanks for watching.